remember where everything is. You just go there and it's always the same. And I love what they did. Hey everyone, just back from the studio, back at home, back from the post office. I got another piece of equipment for my live setup in the studio. It completes it fully. I'm really looking forward to use it tomorrow, so definitely tune in. And I'm also just done watching the Apple special event. And I know a lot of you are interested in these new machines, especially for musicians. I think even more for people that do video editing and graphic kind of stuff. These new machines are something we all have been waiting for a long time. So you might remember a year ago, I think, yeah, a year ago, the new M1 chip was introduced. I got it right here. It's the MacBook Air in the highest spec version. The most expensive was the hard drive, two terabytes, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I love this machine. I back then in the first couple of videos, I, I call it like that's that's the perfect computer for anyone. It's fast, it's reliable, the battery power holds forever. I love it every single day. I think it saves me at least like 20 minutes per day working with it because it's so much faster editing videos. It's so much more reliable making music. Yes, at the beginning, some plugins didn't work, but by now, most plugin companies have adapted to the M1. And right now, I'm still not even sure if I'll, I'll get rid of it. That's how happy I am with this machine. It's, it's, it's fast, I never got to the limit. As you know, I'm right now developing a live setup, so I'm playing Ableton electronic music live with two synthesizers, uh, one of them is in there, and a light show on top. So it's all running on one machine, which makes the entire process a lot easier. I mean, you've seen the clips. There's a lot of processing behind it, a lot of power that the machine actually needs to do, like the visuals that are synced and linked to the music at once with the music and it all works. It, it, never, it never got to a point where I was like, no, that's not possible to showcase in front of a crowd. So now let's get to the new stuff. We have a Mac M1 Pro and a Mac M1 Max. They're supposed to be even a lot faster than, than the regular M1. They're unfortunately also quite a bit more expensive. I was hoping that they will start like 500 euros lower but actually they just took the same prices from the old Intel machines. And at least we get like a new body with new IO. Everything is back that we ever wanted. You see right here, I got one, one here, another one over here. I think in every room that I own, every single room in my studio, I got one of these and at home in every single room at least once. And then one in my backpack. Those are SD card adapters because I, I need them to get like the footage out of the camera into the computer. Now the SD card slot is back. That's amazing. We got an HDMI port back. We got MagSafe back and we got rid of the touch bar. So all of the things I love are back. The things that I hate are gone. There's just one little thing left that I would have loved to see added to the MacBook and that is um, the Face ID. You all know it from your phone, it's very convenient. You just open it, you don't re you even realize it's there. On the Macs, we still have to put our fingers right here. I think there is enough room, it should be possible. They even introduced a notch. I don't mind it as much. It looks a little weird, but you get used to it very fast. I just would love to have like Face ID in there. It's, it's just a perfect match. So maybe in the next kind of version in a year, they'll introduce Face ID into the Max. It, it just makes so much sense. I don't know why they didn't put it in there right now. HD in the camera, <laughs> finally. Like here, it's 720p. That's that's kind of a joke in 2021. So all in all, great machines. I think that's the, the best move Apple ever did and the least Apple-like move. They went back, they, they admitted kind of that these things are missing and pro users actually need them. So it's, 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 I'm, I'm glad to have all of this back. Touch bar is gone. I think Apple also, like, they, they realize no one is really using it. I love, that was also, like, the main reason, like, there was back then the M1 MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook, was it Pro or just Mac, MacBook, I think, with 13-inch. 
and the 13 inch one and the um, Air are identical except for the, the MacBook has fans in there. So when you really use it hardcore, eventually the fans kick in and help a little. So it's a little faster just because of the fans. But I didn't like the touch bar, so I went with the one without, and I love it because like you can remember where everything is. You just go there and it's always the same. And I love what they did. It's like brightness up, down, search, um, the speech thing, the night mode, so, so no one is annoying you. Then um, play, pause, and that stuff for music, volume up and down. That's all I need. I love it. Now, the next point is, should you as a music-making creative person get one of these new Macs? I think right now is the best point in time ever. You should, if, if you have the funds and if you need a new machine and you're unhappy with yours, I was very unhappy with the Intel versions. They were always loud, very slow, very heavy, very expensive. If I didn't have the, the previous M1, I would instantly sell my Intel, try to get as much money back as possible and buy one of these new machines. And I think for music, actually the lower spec ones, that's probably the first time I recommend the lower spec ones. I was always max spec, so I just have the same machine for a lot of years and don't have to switch because switching with all of the plugins is really annoying. You have to go through the process of like verifying all of them again. And some of them you only can have like two or three copies used on computers, so you have to get rid of the old one. It's a mess. But right now, I think the, the basic ones are fast, plenty fast, so fast that they will last you so long that eventually the, the OS won't really support everything. So I expect if you buy one of the new M1s, you can run it like safely four, five, six years for music. I don't see anything big in the music world coming up that will drain your CPU again a lot. The most taxing are like Diva and, and Serum. They're around already for a long time. And even Diva in the highest mode where it really drains the CPU, the M1 just handles it fine. Maybe not 50 of them, but enough to make a song. Like it's, it's plenty. There is enough room to play around and like use these machines for a couple of years. Also, I think the higher spec ones are more geared towards people using it for video editing, 8K. I also think it's more geared for people that do like 3D rendering kind of stuff, like stuff that is way more taxing on your computer than music. And um, the, the most money you spend by upgrading your new uh, M1 Pro and Max is actually towards the GPU, which isn't really that needed kind of when you were making music. So I'd go for like one of the base models, maybe add a little of the RAM just to be safe. Cause actually like Andy, my, my assistant in the studio, he has the same MacBook with like eight gigabytes of RAM. And sometimes if he has like multiple programs open, it says like, hey, you're running out of, of RAM, close place something. If that doesn't bother you, the eight gigs or I think the new ones you can't even get with eight gigs. So yeah, the 16 should be enough to run Logic, Ableton, whatever. If you have multiple programs opened in the background, um, maybe you're using Isotope RX to correct something in the background, then, then maybe go for the one higher, but that's really enough. The hard drive is totally up to you how much space you actually need on the machine, on the go, if you have an external hard drive in the studio. It's probably a lot cheaper than uh, yeah the hard drive still kind of expensive with Apple. If you're on a budget, go for the MacBook Air. I can still 100% recommend it. It won't last you as long. It will get slow eventually in two, three, four years, depending on what you do. But it's it's very slim, very lightweight. I don't even have a charger anymore at home. Like it it lasts over the entire weekend. It's it's insane. I love this little machine. I'm myself even thinking to just wait for, for the next version of this one right here instead of getting the Pro. It's for music, like depending on what kind of music you do, I do a lot with analog synths. I have a lot of audio in there and, and no plugin synths. So I don't need that much actually. So I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm still thinking about getting one for the live show because it has HDMI in there or just skipping and waiting for the new MacBook Air in a year or so. Man, this is like someone did a really good job packaging this one. But yeah, let me know what you think about the new machines. Are you happy? I think you are. I, there's nothing major to complain about these new Macs. Wow. Someone loves duct tape.
It's a MOOC. Some call it MOOC. Slump Fatty. Original manual. And the machine itself. That's the last missing piece and link for the live setup. I love the synth. It's so small. And I got a sequencer I can sequence with. I'll show you everything about it tomorrow. That's, that's kind of really dope stuff. Thanks a lot for watching. See you tomorrow.